Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be taking a look at a new game which is just coming out on April 9th, uh, so if you're watching this on YouTube today, if you're watching the live stream tomorrow, uh, this is a game called Radio General. Uh, the concept of the game is a game where you command soldiers during World War II, Canadian soldiers to be specific, uh, who you do not directly see. Essentially, you receive radio communications about your soldiers' status, their condition, what's going on in the battle, and you, as the general of these soldiers, have to give them orders from the rear. Uh, this is similar, if you've heard of Radio uh, Commander, except that Radio Commander is a game that looks at the Vietnam War and Radio General is a game that looks at World War II, as I said. The game is developed by and published by Foolish Mortals, uh, a studio that has a couple of games on their website that they say they've worked on. I have not, I don't, this is the first game I've seen of theirs on Steam, though. Um, it's an interesting concept, and I'm curious to see how it translates to World War II. Uh, the Vietnam game, Radio Commander, was interesting, but it was very heavy on the sort of voice acting and sort of a a bit of a narrative story it was trying to tell. My initial impression from Radio General is that the maps and the um, and the, the menus or whatnot feel pretty polished for a game that's just coming out from a new studio. And uh, it also has, um, I think, a more full-fleshed-out uh, menu system, although a lot of the stylistic choices seem to be pretty similar to Radio Commander. With that being said, I don't see individual scenarios as an option. Uh, there is a map editor, which is kind of interesting. Um, there's also the ability to play online co-op, which I'm really curious how that would uh, unfold and work. But with all that being said, we're going to jump right in and play a campaign, because that seems to be the only option, since I don't have anyone to play with online right now. So, we'll go ahead and name our officer the Historical Butcher. That'll be the name of our campaign. Uh, looks like you can choose realism options of either low, normal, or high. You can choose to use either figurines or NATO symbols uh, for the units on your maps. I'm going to go with uh, historical, or I'm going to go with figurines. I know a lot of viewers tend to prefer the uh, NATO symbol route, but in this case, we're going to go with uh, figurines. I have not played this before, uh, so I do think we should look at the tutorial. That'll probably be the majority of today's video, would be my guess, but I'm curious to see how well they teach the game. One of the other really unique features about this game is that it allows you to issue your orders via voice command. You don't have to do that, but you can do that, which is both interesting and also potentially problematic depending on how the implementation goes. So let's see how it looks. September 3rd, 1939. Britain and France declare war on Nazi Germany after the invasion of Poland. Britain calls upon its vast commonwealth to aid them in the war. Canada answers the call, sending thousands of sailors, airmen, and soldiers. You are a general in the Canadian Army and have just arrived. Something. Your job is to lead hundreds of men into battle and triumph over a determined enemy. All you have is a radio and a map. <laughs> yes, those ru rugged generals doing it all with so little. This game uses historical documents and video footage to provide context and tell the stories of those who fought. I love the old-timey film reel sound. Ooh! Canadian Army Newsreel, issue number two. On December 17th, 1939, the first Canadians landed in Britain, vanguard of a great army. They came to finish the job that their fathers had begun a quarter of a century before. In June 1940 came the first call to action. In high spirits, they marched to the ships on their way to France, itching for a fight. Once across the Channel, the Canadians penetrated more than 200 miles. But with the tragic collapse of France came the order to return to Britain. In the dark days after Dunkirk, Almost the only trained and equipped troops between Hitler and London were General McNaughton's Canadians, who stood guard throughout those days of high tension. While hurricanes swept the sky, Canadian ak ak batteries blazed at the lip lock from the ground, playing their part in the Battle of Britain. And now the Canadians are preparing to rip through the Huns, 
when the Allied War Council gives the signal for the cross-channel dash on the road to Berlin. The Canadians are ready. Zero hour is coming. Ra ra Canada. This is going to be an interesting game. I love the uh, wartime era footage. So apparently we came over. We uh, didn't get to fight in the northern, uh, I guess, European campaign in France. Looks like it's 1942. Um, also, by the way, you can apparently create your own missions. Well, I think that would come with a map editor. But 1942 is where the campaign starts. We'll click there. Oh, boy. We're going to have a fun one. Uh, looks like we're going to start with the Dieppe raid. This will go well. Stalin has demanded a second front be opened. Canadian officers are eager to prove the worth of the Canadian army. A daring raid on the French port town of Dieppe is ready. We attack in the morning. Yeah, Dieppe didn't go so well. Um, can I get an F in the chat for that? All right, let's see what happens here. Now this is the tutorial, uh, so I'm hoping it's not too bad. August 19th, 1942, Dieppe, France. Okay, so we get a bunch of documents that all come up. Welcome to Dieppe, location northern France, Normandy, features historic port town, seaside resort, pebble beach, white chalky cliffs, heavily fortified coast, barbed wire, and mines, traps, and pillboxes. Named for its deep water, the town was used for fishing historically during the Age of Exploration. Dieppe was known for its skilled cardio or cartographers and navigators. Prior to both World Wars, Dieppe was popularized as a seaside resort. Dieppe is a strategic target in wartime due to its port and strategic location in the English Channel. You're not going to get the David O'Keefe thesis? I don't, I don't know what that is, Neuhauser. But George was at Dieppe. You slept well that night, didn't you? Uh... Save land. Okay, so those are like for victory bonds. Canada declares war. Newspaper headlines following the radio broadcast on September 9th, 1939. Okay, there's a lot of cool little little bits here. Canadian troops embarking on landing craft during the exercises before Dieppe. So you've got a bunch of different little historical uh, vignettes, if you will. Different historical graphics, images, text. Trying to provide a little bit of flavor here to uh, the campaign that you're about to go into. The O'Keefe thesis is that Dieppe was run largely to obtain Wehrmacht and, and a Wehrmacht Enigma machine. Interesting. I had never heard that before. Did it succeed in that? Is that, is that like a justification of like, all these men died, but we got an Enigma. Did they even get an Enigma? All right, let's continue here. Um, with the Eastern Front going poorly, Stalin has demanded the opening of a second front. Canadian officers are eager to prove their worth of the Canadian army and are prepared to bring the fight to the Germans. A daring raid on the French port town of Dieppe is ready. Canadian, British, and American forces attack in the morning. Wait, American? Or like aircraft? Uh, to achieve complete surprise, no preemptive bombardment will be used. We expect the enemy to be unprepared and their defense is weak. Our troops will push inland, take the town, fall back to the beach after the allotted time. This will be a decisive show of force and show the Germans that we mean business. You will command the flanks of the operation. Several command commando units have landed behind enemy lines. You must silence enemy guns and prevent an any enemy reinforcements from reaching Dieppe. Okay, so that's the overview of the mission. Intel report, battalion strength 200 to 400 light infantry, one artillery battery, no enemy panzers. Enemy positions, high chalky cliffs, limit landable beach areas with low enemy numbers. They will be most likely defending Dieppe itself. Stay calm, move quickly, and follow your instructions. Dieppe raid here, there's two objectives. Hold Dieppe, that gives us 10 points. Hold Newville, that gives us five. Mission duration, 45 hours. The forces that we have at our disposal, number three commando, we have number four commando as a reserve unit, and at 900 hours we will get naval gunfire support of HMCS Saskatchewan. Okay. I like all of these little graphics, all these little, you know, these little documents or whatnot. Uh, but remember, this is the tutorial, so we'll see what happens here. 
Oh shit, the stream died. One second, guys. Well, you, you can't hear me. I'm back! I'm back! What the hell? That was weird. Didn't even tell me I was dropping any frames. I just, like, got disconnected from Twitch. That was weird. Okay, so as a reminder, this is the tutorial, so we're going to jump right in. Welcome to your first operation. Please read mission briefings before continuing. So we've got 4,500 hours over here. I guess that's 45 hours left in the command in the game. We have the option to use voice commands or not. I am going to use voice commands because I think that's one of the cool little things here that this game supports. Okay, so when I'm ready, hold spacebar, say start mission into the into the microphone, and then release. All right, so this will be tricky given we're doing a stream while we're trying to issue commands, but we'll see how it goes. Start mission. Okay, so we've got our overview pamphlet down here. We get little dispatches that come up here. So obviously it's the tutorial, but we can move around this little map. You can see the map down here that's given us like our operational area. You can use the mouse wheel to scroll in or out. Uh, I'm a general setting in a tent. My units are currently in France. You are far away. Fr they are far away from you. Okay, so am I in like the coast of England? Because there's rock rocks here. An infantry company named Abel has infiltrated enemy lines. However, since Abel's far away from you, you can't interact with them directly. Hopefully we don't have the market garden radios. This figurine represents Abel. It is not the unit itself, however, but it can be used to send orders to Abel. Okay, so, oh, I like the little wooden thing that lets you move, move units around. I don't even know what those things are called, but that's cool. You can view Abel's stats by right-clicking on the figurine and clicking the unit stats. Try this now. Okay, so we get a little pop-up here, and on the bottom right you can see Abel has 100 troops. Their morale is 100. They can move 6 kilometers an hour. They have 0% defense, 0 0.55 uh, damage. Attack radius is a kilometer. Sight range is 2. Voice commands are activated by holding space. Yep, got it. The bottom left panel shows the available commands. Uh, detected commands are highlighted are highlighted as you speak. Release space bar to execute the topmost recognized command and say clear to cancel. Everything will be done via voice command. Can also be done by right clicking on the figurines. Right clicking. Have able report status. Okay. Able report status. Where's November 9th? Oh, it's over here. So the tutorial is going to help me out by like popping up with little squares and things like that to tell me where my troops are. But that's not actually reflective of how the game presumably will look after the tutorial. Figurines pulsate when correctly positioned near their actual unit. This also grants minor combat bonuses. Okay, so if you estimate where they are, if you put them on the right spot of the map, then you get a slight bonus. As you see, when you hover over different parts of the map, you get what that map's hex is. So this hex, for example, here is Juliet 8. This hex over here by Hill 2 Location 2, uh, at the top of it here is Lima 8. And you can see it's a hex-based map, so each one of these maps here has a different sort of... Uh, name and a different number so five appears to be the row here as you move down you get up toward 12 so it appears to be a 12 um deep map and then obviously as you go vertical north or as you go east west you get different names for the hexes charlie here our landing craft has reached the beaches and we're about to disembark wish us luck Okay, so we've got Charlie Company coming here on the beach. Okay. So Charlie's getting hit by artillery, and they're also getting shot at by troops as they're trying to come ashore on the beach. Our unit that we can directly command here is Able, and we need to command it. So we'll go ahead and say, Able, move to location two. So we're going to see Abel's actual location here, but this won't that won't happen in future battles. By the way, let me know if you can hear me okay over the combat, guys. 
So you can see Abel is engaging with artillery here. You can see attack range is this red circle or this red radius. Defense is blue, so they can defend out to blue, um, I think, or yeah, and then morale is yellow. So red is the attack, blue is defense, yellow is morale down here. We can hover over Abel and we'll get the, the score there. All right, I lowered the volume a little bit. Let me know if it's any better. Okay, so Dog and Charlie are both pinned down on the beach. Uh, we need to issue orders for them to move to location one, which I'm not going to try and pronounce that. Abel, move to location one. Jesus, it's loud. Okay, so these guys are fighting, but the defenders are in this, this location. They have a 50% defense bonus. We have five. You can see here we've taken 12 casualties, 13 casualties. The enemy's only taken six or seven now. So this battle's definitely going against us right now. You can see time's progressing here. What are we, five hours into the fight? I mean, I can't click over here. Can't make it go away, I see that. Okay, so Abel's falling back by the looks of it. Unfortunately, Abel's morale hit zero, causing a panicky retreat. They must recover and regroup before receiving orders again. Okay. We need more troops. So we can bring in our reserves that you saw from the clipboard on the left side. We have number four commando available as reserves. We click on that and you can see Baker companies coming up on the left flank. So obviously this is a highly scripted battle. It is a tutorial. Again, these blue moving hexes are not what you'll see in the actual battles according to everything I've seen. All right, so now we want able to regroup Okay, so we want to attack them simultaneously from each flank. Baker, move to location one. Abel, move to location one. All right, so you can see we now have Abel and Baker flanking Tango 4, the German company there. Their defense goes down to zero because the enemy's flanked, so they're not as well covered. Abel's taken 27 casualties, now 28, but you can see Tango's casualties are rapidly increasing. Tango's morale is rapidly falling. Baker, move to Hotel 2. Baker, move to Hotel 2. What? Oh, Hotel 10. Baker, move to Hotel 10. Shouldn't I have been able to move them to Hotel? Well, Hotel 2 would have been in the water, so I guess that's, that's fair. Abel, Baker, dig in. Okay, so now it's given us a field manual to kind of go over voice commands, elevation, infantry. So all these things apparently play a role. So the contour lines are going to influence how units engage. So these hills, for example, will be better uh, battle positions, uh, presumably. Terrain and landmarks matter. These are crossroads, so this is a strategic crossroads here. 
Uh, so those are important things in terms of defending or where the enemy avenue of advance might be. One of the things that I saw was that as units move, if they're moving a short distance, they'll take a direct route. But if they're moving a long distance, then they'll rely on things like roadways to move more quickly. So again, it does seem like there's a fair bit of depth and detail into this. Um, I'm not going to jump through all of the different things, artillery, any tank guns, engineers. I'll probably have to do that off screen. But those are all different things to keep in mind when you're playing this. Enemy reinforcements are coming up. Our troops are trying to clear the beach, but they haven't been able to get off it yet. Looks like there's enemy tanks come in on each flank. Tango 5 and Tango 6. It looks like there's four enemy tanks on each flank. Their defense is 30. Their morale is 100. Bring up the Piats. Launch the ambush. Hey, Newhauser, it's a Market Garden reference. Come on, man. Well, that doesn't look good. Enemy infantry is coming up, too. You're losing. If you order them to retreat, you might save lives. On the other hand, letting those tanks get to the beach might cost even more our lives. The option is yours. Oh, shit. Do we have them hold their position and try and save lives on the beach, or do we have them retreat? Able, hold position. <laughs> Baker broke. Baker, retreat. We're having trouble contacting your units. Try to reestablish contact. Able, report. Able, report. Able, report status. Baker, report status. Oh boy. <laughs> they dead. They're so dead. <laughs> no. And the beach is being overrun. Oops. Are those German tanks or our tanks? Fox, fire barrage at Kilo 3. Maybe you guys could have brought the destroyers in sooner. Fox, fire barrage at Juliet 4. Fox, fire barrage at India 4. Fox, fire barrage at Hotel 4. I'm sorry, boys. We're going to have to leave you behind. The boys we left behind will have to surrender. Something tells me they wouldn't be quite so sanguine to be like, The war ain't over yet, boys. Radio static. Uh, well, we didn't hold Dieppe and we didn't hold Neuville. I'm going to guess you couldn't. And that's just the way the, the tutorial went. We sacrificed Abel and Baker companies to try and ensure that the troops on the beach were able to get out. There's apparently a replay option as well.
Soldiers under your command have been killed. Their families must be notified. It may provide some comfort if you were to write directly to these families. What? Well, what? I need to write a letter? Attention, Mrs. Chan. Uh... Um, is this his wife or mother? Corporal Douglas Chan. I don't know what to say. I can't do better! <laughs> oh man, that was... That was interesting. That's kind of a, a goosebumpy kind of a kind, kind of a thing. Like, write letters to fallen soldiers? Testing Fortress Europe. Dieppe was a disaster for the Canadians. More Canadians would be captured in the Dieppe raid than would be for the entire 1944 to 45 Northwest Europe campaign. A lack of understanding of beach conditions and overestimating the power of suppressing surprise tank assaults led to a costly defeat. With fewer than half the Canadians returning to Britain, the lessons learned from Dieppe would be imperative in the success achieved on D-Day. The addition of heavy firepower support from aircraft and navy, communication advances, and modifications to tanks and landing craft would make the difference on D-Day. <laughs> oh wait, was it was he MIA or KIA? Did I say did I say he died? Uh, and then you've got some of the uh, historical photos here. I can't imagine being part of such a shoestring type operation as Dieppe and comparing what they had in 42 compared to what they had in 44. I know it was only a raid. It wasn't intended to, you know, be a staying power type thing, but. At the end of the Second World War, Canadian Brewery published this collection of illustrations as a tribute to French Canadian soldiers and the battles they fought. Interesting. Major J.M. Figgett and members of his company of the Royal Hamilton Light Infantry kneeling at the graves of Canadian soldiers killed at Dieppe. So they, they came back to Dieppe in September of 44. So after the Normandy campaign, or during the Normandy campaign, after the breakout, these soldiers came to the graves of the French, or of the, the Canadian soldiers who were killed at Dieppe. That's kind of a, it's a bit, that's moving. paper is a complete fabrication of the truth since Dieppe's main goals were to give the Canadian action and to raise morale in Europe among allies. Even though the raid accomplished none of it, its military objectives, the papers were able to raise morale anyway. Dieppe proved a very important learning moment for the later staging of D-Day. So these, I'm assuming, are like actual... What? Six months after Dieppe, the fanfare and smoke had cleared, and the media sources were very clear on the failure of the mission. The article's critical of military reports of Dieppe as a success and cautioned a more measured approach. Okay. What's this? This could be cool. Like all the rest of the Canadian Army, the 1st Army Tank Brigade is going to see these days. For combined ops is the order of the day, and no amount of training can be too great. There must be perfect cooperation with the Navy, and an understanding of the problems facing the men who bring the landing craft to the assault feature. the beach, the ramps are lowered and the tanks prepare to move ashore.
These are Churchill, the tanks that landed at Dieppe. In one glorious day of battle, they gained valuable experience that helped make the landings in North Africa successful. Dieppe was a great combined ops proving ground. And remember, Jerry, next time we go, we go to stay. I like how the tank starts to get stuck right as the video ends. It's like, oh, quick, cut it, cut it. Don't show that. Okay. Okay, so that's interesting. We completed the Dieppe raid. It looks like the next battle will be a training operation. So Dieppe has proved far more training is needed before we're ready to face the Germans again. Field exercises are performed under more realistic conditions where you can't see your units. Uh, topics include units getting lost, reorient reorienting, being out of communication, spotting and tagging enemies, radio channel communications, uh, and artillery, radio channels and artillery. I'm not sure if, like, this whole piece is part of the tutorial. I mean, it's a training operation, so presumably it's probably also part of the tutorial. I wonder if we can jump right to Sicily. We could! We could jump right to the Sicily campaign. The 42 campaign presumably just goes on for training in England now. I don't think there will be anything else in 42 in England. Sicily would be my assumption is where the game, like, really starts. Um, I guess 42 could end up going to North Africa, too. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, with that said, guys, uh, I know this is a bit of a shorter video, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. This is really just a first look. This is really interesting. Um, I'm curious to see what it feels like when they take some of the training wheels off as you get through the tutorial uh, and as you kind of really dig deeper into the game. But as an initial impression, I think this looks in at least... Uh, granted, it's the tutorial, but the tutorial looked really well, well done, in my opinion. I mean, it kind of handheld you through it. It didn't give you really an option to fail. You were going to fail no matter what anyway. But uh, there's a lot of a lot of work, in my opinion, went into into this game, and I think it's it it shows so far. And I think I'll probably continue to play it, and we'll see uh, how things uh, how things unfold as we get further into the game. I think what we'll probably do is we'll stream this again tomorrow night, uh, probably around 9:30 Central Standard Time, between 9:30 and 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, um, and we'll go for a bit longer. So we'll probably stream for an hour or two. Uh, tomorrow and hopefully fight a couple more battles and see how this thing plays out. Um, so that'll be April 9th between 9.30 and 10 o'clock Central Standard Time on my Twitch channel. Uh, and then we will sort of pick this up and then potentially turn this into a series because there's there's a lot to like about this. I won't go through all of the different, the different pictures and images and photographs and all of that stuff. I just said three words for the same thing. Um... <laughs> But I won't go through all of that quite in so much laborious detail. It was just my first time seeing some of it. So I think it's pretty um, ambiance building. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the uh, video. Let me know your thoughts and if this is something you think is interesting. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out.